So we're joined now by Chad Troutline, instrumental in turning Freakonomics, the wildly popular book, into a movie. Thanks for joining us. That's no, my pleasure. So tell me, this isn't your traditional book to movie story. How did you guys come up with the idea to turn mm. this book into a movie? Yeah, it was too expensive for me to buy a novel. And so, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I think like a lot of producers who want to see a literary work come to the screen, I was really moved. And every medium is different. So I wanted more people to learn about Freakonomics and Freakonomic thinking than had read the book. And even though more than four million people ended up getting the book, you know there are a lot of people who just don't read anymore. And I think that's okay. And that doesn't mean that they should be constrained to just uh, you know, intellectually vacant films. So our book is a way to celebrate, or our film is a way to celebrate the book and to invite people in who almost read the book. <laughs> so what challenges did you find in turning you know, a, a theoretical economics book into a movie? From the very beginning, we wanted to do two things that could have been at odds with one another, and that is make it completely accessible, an, a truly entertaining film, while at the same time not dumbing down any of the material. So we wanted to be academically and intellectually honest to what Steve Levitt and Stephen Dubner created but draw in as many people as we could. So to do that, we knew we had to make it really engaging and really entertaining. And so those were some of the challenges. And also, uh, this is a different kind of film. Rather than using a single director, we used different directors to take on challenging and controversial material from the book. So in a way, it's like five films in one. There are four distinct segments, uh, and then a fifth segment uh, directed by Seth Gordon, who weaves together all the other four segments. Our main segments are directed by Academy Award nominees and Academy Award winners and Sundance winners, uh, well-known filmmakers, Morgan Spurlock, Rachel Grady and Heidi Ewing, Alex Gibney, and the brilliant Eugene Jarecki. And so one of the challenges was, can we put together something that has different chefs and still create a wonderful, delicious, harmonious meal? And I think we have. And this movie will be in theater soon, but before that, you released it on iTunes. Why did you make that choice? That was Apple. Um, we wanted to do something interesting with our platform release. And so for the first time in history, a uh, film was released in the iTunes store before its theatrical release. And we were just fortunate that we thought that they thought we would be the right fit. I'm platform agnostic. I love to go to the movies. I like to sit down in that environment. And frankly, I don't think it can be replicated anywhere else. But there are a lot of people who either live in remote areas or sort of anchored to their home or office who prefer to consume things through their computer or on demand. And so we wanted to make it available for those folks too. So after that iTunes release, you did do screenings in what, 10 major cities, but there was a unique idea in play here, the, the pay what you want experience, where you let patrons pay anything from what, a dollar to a hundred? A penny. A penny. As a little penny. as a penny to a hundred. To a hundred. Inspired by an idea from the book. What, it, exactly. What did you learn from this experiment and, and how much did people pay? We learned that people, uh, when given the opportunity to pay what they want, choose not to pay very much. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. And we know that. And what we weren't trying to create necessarily was a model to shake up the traditional ticket pricing model where there's a single price for everyone. Instead, we wanted to give people an opportunity to consume the film. And we wanted an opportunity for people to maybe show their displeasure with current pricing or to see a film that maybe they wouldn't have seen otherwise. And I think a lot of people had fun with it. People tended to pay uh, the lower amounts more than the higher amounts, um, but the crowd reactions were fantastic. And I think if people feel like they're getting a good value, they go in with better expectations, and maybe they enjoy the experience even more. So we had great reactions in the festival circuit this summer, but I peeked in on the pay what you want screenings, and people love this film. And I think it, uh, it seems like a real bargain when you can pay a penny and see a film even before it comes out in theaters. No kidding. So what do you hope people take away from the movie that they couldn't have gotten from the book? Okay, that's really the most important question. This isn't an obviously cause-oriented film, but it is to me. I think if you look at the kind of approach that Stephen Levitt has taken to sociological phenomena and apply it to your everyday life, you can make better decisions. That's why I wanted more people to learn about Freakonomics. I think if you're a parent, you can become a better one. If you're in a business like I do, I think you can learn things in Freakonomics that will help you be a better business person. I think our policymakers could learn a lot from Freakonomics and helping 
design programs that will be more effective maybe than some of the ones we have now. So I think in that way, it's an extremely important book. And I really wanted people to have the opportunity to, to learn about it in this way. So um, those were my three goals. I wanted to make a film that had a financial return so I could make more. Uh, I wanted a film that stood alone creatively so people could look back and judge it just as an artistic piece of work and, and be pleased with it. And three, I, wanted as, I still want as many people as possible to learn about the great work that uh, Steve Levitt and Stephen Dubner did in Freakonomics. Great. Well, Chad Troutwine, thanks so much for joining us and best of luck with Freakonomics. Thank you.